What is up ladies and gentlemen? I am going to do my best at making a globe here on Onshape today using some of the skills we've already talked about um, but I think this is a good complex part because it has some interesting features some of our features are at an angle um, and then how do we do this overall? The only part I wasn't quite happy with is that there's no way to import a, a feature or, or a texture onto a surface Whereas on Fusion, I was able to import a texture of a globe and kind of get it to wrap around. Uh, unfortunately, we can't do that here. So in the meantime, what we are going to do is just build the globe and then call it done there. So I'm going to click on plus and create part studio. And when it comes to making these parts, what I recommend doing is starting from the base. And so by doing something that can potentially be difficult you want to think about when you're creating these parts to start somewhere that would be easy to build off of. And for us, that's going to be the base right here and we're gonna build up. So I'm gonna click on sketch, this top plane right here, view normal two, and then we're just gonna do a circle. So C for circle on my keyboard and hit the green check mark. And that is already looking good. Now, typically what I do is go ahead and make my other planes invisible. That way, um, when I'm doing things, since I'm building off of this sketch and this feature, um, I really don't need my other work planes at the moment. So let's go ahead and extrude the shape. Um, one inch looks fine. Again, this is just looking like to scale. So most of the parts that I make right now aren't necessarily to uh, specific dimensions, but more of does it look right. Okay, so we got our base. I'm gonna go ahead and add a chamfer on this top part right here. Let's make that just a little bit bigger. 0 0.4 is my distance there. Hit the green check mark and we're already looking okay. So I'm going to click on sketch and we're going to add a rounded part to our globe on this top side right here. So what I recommend doing is uh, just start a new sketch on that surface. Let's draw another circle but let's make it just a little bit smaller. Okay and then on top of that I am going to draw just a line all the way down the middle of my circle here because what I want to do is I'm going to do a revolve feature and since we're doing revolve I need something to rotate around. So I'm going to green check mark. We've got our circle with a line drawn through the middle. We're going to hit revolve. We're going to hit this half right here. The revolve axis is going to be the middle and there we go, we're already looking good. We've got our base made. So what do I do from here? How do I exactly start my next part? And so what I would recommend doing is starting to think about when we extrude objects, we can extrude them from other surfaces. So what I'm gonna do actually, is I'm gonna go to the bottom right here, right click and uh, hit view normal too. And this is where I'm going to start my sketch for my the stem of my globe. So I'm going to hit C for circle. Oh, we got a sketch plane. There we go. C for circle. And let's do a quarter inch, or about quarter inch. Let's go ahead and dimension this. D for dimension, 0 0.25 inches for diameter. Hit the green check mark. And we're going to extrude this stem on through. So what I'm going to do is... By extreme that, we're going to flip the direction and we're just going to make it go a lot farther. And so one thing I want you to start thinking of is when we do extrusions, we can do them through other features we've already made rather than just adding on. And so that distance overall is looking okay. So we're going to hit the green check mark and we've got our base made so far. So the next piece I'm gonna do is um, that holder for my globe. So how do, we, how do we do this exactly? And so what I'm gonna do then is start to reference my other planes um, that are still in my part file. Since the base of my part, and you see this dot right here, is at zero, 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 what I can do is every once in a while we can still reference our original work planes. And so we see my front plane right here is still usable. And it's, it's, it's kind of in the exact spot I need it to be. And so what we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna create a sketch on this front plane. 
So I'm going to click on Sketch, Front Plane right here, right click, hit View Normal 2. And let's go ahead and hit C for Circle. So I want to make sure that my globe is lined up correctly. We don't want it to be off to the left or to the right too much. So one thing Onshape does a really good job of doing is predicting what you want to happen uh, as far as geometric constraints. And so if I hover over the middle of my part, it has predicted, hey, do you want this circle to be in line with 0, 0? And that's exactly what I want because I want my globe to be uh, kind of in the correct spot. So as I hover over, you see my lines become dotted. And so from here, what this allows me to do is allows me to draw a circle that is automatically lined up and constrained with um, my bottom part over here. Okay, that is already looking good so far. So what I'm gonna do now is draw another circle. And so let's try that again. C for circle. And we want this part to be overlapping the stem and that's looking good so far. All right, let's go ahead and draw a line all the way through, making sure it's going through the center of my circle right there. I'm gonna hit M on my keyboard for trim, and we're gonna go ahead and just trim this up a little bit, because this is only going to be for my holder right here. And so by using some of those automatic constraints, we're able to get it lined up perfectly where we need it to be and that is already looking because we have the green check mark. And let's go ahead and extrude this shape. But um, we run into a little bit of a problem. It goes to one side. So, how do we change this? We're going to, instead of blind, we're going to click on symmetric and it will extrude it both directions. We're going to go and bring down that thickness a little bit to a little bit more of what we want. So, the diameter of my rod here is a quarter inch. So I want that holder to be kind of a, a little bit more than that. Hit the green check mark and we're looking okay. So far, this looks good, all right? Next thing I'm gonna do is now create my globe and the axis to go through my globe. So I'm gonna right click, hit view normal too, and now let's create our globe. So I'm gonna hit C for circle again. I'm gonna find, oh, let's try the sketch. Front plane, right click, hit view normal too. There we go. And now let's hit C for circle. And it's predicting that same spot. So the spot's super helpful, but I need to reference an earlier part, an earlier sketch. So how do I reference that earlier sketch? Well, let's just make it visible. And there's my pot part right here. There's my dot, the center of the circle I was already using. So what I can do then is just reference it, click on it, and there we go, my globe is automatically aligned to be concentric with its holder. And let's go ahead, just like we did on the base, let's draw a line all the way through, because we're gonna use that revolve feature, and hit the green check mark. We're looking good. So we're gonna revolve, we're gonna revolve this around this center axis, and it's gonna be a new part. Everything is looking good. And there we go. All right, the only thing I'm gonna do now is create my holder and then change my colors and we're done for today. But I don't need that globe in the way, so I'm gonna go ahead and make it invisible or inactive. Click on sketch and I wanna click on the face of this part I've made and you can see it's already uh, producing that angle that I need to go through my globe. So by clicking on here, what we're gonna do now is uh, we're gonna draw a line. We're gonna draw a line that's gonna go through the middle of my plane right here. And what you notice is that the uh, Onshape does a pretty good job of predicting what you want to happen. And I like it, it's looking good. So the only problem I did have is it looks like is this bottom side, that looks perpendicular. However, this top side up here does not look perpendicular, and it looks a little bit of an angle. So I'm gonna click on the perpendicular constraint, and we're gonna make these two lines perpendicular to each other, and it's gonna fix us, us up, looking really good. 
All right, since we're making a circular rod, we're doing the same thing again with revolve, but when we click on revolve, we're gonna click on uh, the multiple profiles we need. And so what I found to be the case is that sometimes it will predict um, not the full feature you want to revolve. So you notice I had to select these two other ones up there. That revolve axis is going to be that center line right there. And that is looking good so far. We don't want to go and create this as new because I want my stand and my axle and my world to be all different parts. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, there we go. We've made a part. This might be one of our last static pieces where we're not creating any constraints. Uh, from here on, we're going to start to build on constraints and automated motions um, unless I decide to dive more into specific features of static. In the meantime, just hold tight and I'll produce these on shape videos as I get time. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, feel free to throw them down in the comment section. I would love to help you out in whatever way I can. And if you like these videos and they've been helpful, feel free to like and subscribe. Absolutely, it helps me out. Good luck. If you have any questions, let me know. Until then, I'll see you on the next video.